This is Pocket Ship, a 15-foot sailboat I designed, more or less on a whim, back in 2008. To my surprise, the design has found a following, and Pocket Ships have been built on six continents. As of 2014, I can document at least 60 of the things sailing or under construction. Builders of all skill levels, working from plans or from a Chesapeake Lightcraft kit, are enthusiastic about the boat's handle, which has real spark, and its roomy cockpit and surprisingly spacious cabin, and its wholesome good looks. I guess it's something like a Sam Crocker sloop from the 1930s crossed with a snipe dinghy. Whatever it is, I've had an awful lot of fun sailing pocket ship number one all over the United States. This video was shot in my home waters near Annapolis, Maryland. I get a lot of questions about handling the boat on and off the water, so we fitted some cameras and gathered up a chase boat. I hope I can give you a sense of what it's like to rig and launch pocket ship and how to manage the boat under sail. We'll start where everyone does, rolling up to the launch ramp. Pocket ship and trailer combined don't weigh much more than a ton, so this V6 powered Ford is plenty of tow vehicle. Designed right into the boat from the start was a mast hinged in a tabernacle with everything set up so that you can leave the sails bent on while traveling. These UV resistant canvas covers are designed for highway speeds and allow a very quick rigging and launch sequence. Even the jib is rigged and ready, sheets and all. Now, the first time you launch your pocket ship, all of the halyards and so on will be a spaghetti tangle. But after a few launches, you'll figure out how to set up everything so it's as easy as it looks here. Just rotate the mast upright and use the two to one jib halyard to pull the mast the last couple of feet. That's it. Back her down the ramp. This is actually a pretty lousy ramp. Shallow water and not as steep as you'd like, which is good for demonstration purposes. I almost always launch and retrieve solo and this is how it goes. Dunk the trailer and don't forget to put the car in park. A pair of knee boots is my secret to painless launches. Hop up on the trailer and let the bow roller go. Push the boat back a few feet, then stop and hook up the bobstay. One of these days I'll adjust my trailer winch so that it's lower than the bow eye and I can leave the bobstay rigged on the trailer. With the bobstay attached, I'll sway up the last few inches on the jib hug. You want it like a guitar string. Shove the boat off the trailer and don't forget a bow line to moor to the dock. Then off you go with the trailer. Don't lock the keys in the car. The only real rigging you have to do is to slide the mainsail cars onto the mast track, which takes all of 30 seconds. Now, this is the moment where most everyone starts fiddling nervously with their outboard motors. Unless I'm sailing someplace with a lot of current or an impossible lee shore, I leave the noisy, greasy thing at home. If it ain't blowing a half gale on the nose, I'm confident I can sail the boat out of the marina. You should be too. Try it! When hoisting a gaff mainsail, you'll haul on both peak and throat halyards simultaneously, keeping the gaff horizontal until the throat halyard tops out. Then finish off by steving up the gaff with the peak halyard. Point the bow in the direction you want to go, give her a push, and you're under sail. As long as you didn't forget to lower the centerboard, you're sailing, under perfect control, with no dings in your pocket ship or anyone else's boat. The roller furling jib is set in a flash. We start out in light air, and Pocket Ship shows what clean lines and a powerful rig can do. We're stooging along here with plenty of speed and just seven or eight knots of breeze. Tacking a little sloop like this is easy, but there are one or two points of finesse I'd like to demonstrate. 
Here we go into attack. Let the jib sheet fly and helms a lee. When the sails fill in the new tack, don't strap the jib sheet in really tight. Get some speed on to get the water moving across the centerboard. Then ease the jib in the last few inches. A great way to stall the boat is to yank the jib in too tight right after you tack. Let's watch that again. We settle on the new tack, get up a little speed, then pull the jib sheet in the last bit. As our speed builds, we can harden up a little closer to the wind. Pocket Chip carries an asymmetrical spinnaker set from the end of the bowsprit. It's easier to launch the spinnaker if you've got two people, of course, but it can be done solo, as I'll demonstrate here, with a little luck. I'll roll up the jib and ease the mainsail, heaving to while I sort out the spinnaker, standing in the safety of the companionway. There's a halyard to attach, the tack outhaul, and a single sheet. Usually, when you set these spinnakers, you'll be on a single jibe for a long time, so I don't bother with two sheets. That's just more to get tangled. First, haul the tack out to the end of the bowsprit. Then make sure the sheet is led properly and ready to go. Ideally, you'll set the spinnaker in the lee of the mainsail. Finally, when everything is ready, haul away on the spinnaker halyard. Don't waste any time getting it to the masthead. This is usually when everything goes sideways and you end up trawling for shrimp with a spinnaker in the water. Sheet the spinnaker in right away before it flogs itself to death. And off she goes. Great fun. A long spinnaker reach and pocket chip is a magic carpet ride. We've bumped up over five knots of boat speed on a 13-foot waterline. And look at how flat that wake is. This is a really easily driven boat. Jibing the spinnaker is a little tricky if you're by yourself and you're only using one sheet. If you have two sheets, you don't need to leave the cockpit, of course, assuming that the second sheet doesn't get tangled, which it usually does. Generally, I'll douse the spinnaker to jibe, and then reset the spinnaker on the new jibe. But since the cameras are rolling, here's a solo spinnaker jibe. All right, I'm gonna watch the world's most dangerous jibe. I walked forward, handed the sheet around the forestay, Drove it through the block on the new jibe. And that's it. I can't wait for all the angry emails. Dousing the spinnaker is a matter of reversing the hoisting process and trying not to get wet. Now the wind has filled in and we're getting up into the 13 or 14 knot range. If pocket chip is lightly loaded, it's just me aboard and there are no cruising stores below, you'll want to pull in a reef to keep her on her feet. I'll stow the jib and, standing in the companionway, lower the gaff.
Then I'll haul on the slab reefing lines and within a minute or two, I've got a reef in the mainsail. Now she's really boiling along. This is great sailing. I could do this forever. All good things must end, and it's back to the dock. I'll coast up to the dock, rolling up the jib to help control my speed. When I'm within coasting range of the dock, I'll let go of the main halyards. Timed it just right, and it takes nothing at all to bring her to a stop. Then it's back onto the trailer. A straightforward solo operation once you've done it a few times. Putting the boat to bed takes a couple of minutes at most. I use the sail cover to gather up all of the shrouds and halyards so they don't flog on the road. Again, everything stays rigged. Shrouds are still attached, sheets are rove, sails bent onto the spars. The boat's ready to go the next time I launch. So, off to the next adventure. I'll see you on the water. I'm John Harris. Visit us at clcboats.com.